What am I doing? Why are you angry at me? I'm not doing anything wrong. What do you want? What do you want? Stop harassing me. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Is this the devil, dude? We were having Jassus. success here. Gosh, we gotta run every single time the devil gets upset. We're making an impact. This is this is nonsense. We're not running away from three people when the police walk right by us and had no problem with us being here. We're going to Turkey, dude. Dude, we're going to Turkey. They're Muslim. They're going to be mad at us. Okay. Okay, that's I stupid for us to just turn around and run everywhere we go. What are you doing? Dude, leave us alone, seriously. Leave us alone. Leave us alone, man. Oh, police. Police. Okay. Praise God, we ran into some souls tonight. We <laughs> ran into somebody who was searching for God. And uh, it, was a, it was a huge blessing. Uh, they've been really looking for God. They've been really looking for Christ. And uh, really shocked. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest, I hate to say it that way. But it was awesome to see. Um, he, was, he was hungry. He says he's been watching the Jesus videos. You know, he... he Looked at the track. He had some questions. We were able to use a few Suras, Sura 568, and Sura, uh, Sura 7, verse 157, kind of refuting a lot of the lies that these imams have been telling these Muslims. One of the main lies that they've been telling these people is that the Quran or the, or the Bible for, and the Gospels have been altered and changed. It's one of the lies that they sow except for there's a little bit of a, a, a flaw in that, in that the Quran itself, believe it or not, has passages that confirm the validity of the gospel and the Torah. So there's this, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to discover this lie. And if you know some of the verses out of the Quran, which you know, Dakota and I have been kind of looking into, you can kind of pick them apart and leave them flat-footed a little bit given deep understanding of the truth and so when we brought those verses up we basically confirmed that look even even you, you know your God Allah in in the uh, Quran oh he's a false God confirms that the Gospels are what you are you are to use to judge and so you know if we if we know these passages and we've kind of done a little bit of our homework we can, you know, present him to them and really catch him off guard. But it's not like we're doing it in our own wisdom, brother. We're no. not, we're not using the Quran with our own wisdom and trying to, you know, no. convince people of things. But it's it the is, Holy Spirit convicting this individual. It is important to study um, apologetics because the Apostle Paul used apologetics in Acts yes. 17. He studied the, the Greek writings. Even the own poets, the Greek yeah. poets. And so he that was he able could to... witness to those people and get yes. them to understand what he was saying. So it's not through our own wisdom or understanding of texts or even our textual criticism that's going to get people saved. What's going to get people saved is the fact that God has been calling this individual to Christ. And we've been praying that God would lead us to this individual and boom, we run right into him. So that's what's a blessing. So anyway, it's been a it's been a blessing. This city has actually been a refreshment. We haven't been chased around. We haven't been detained. We've been playing the speaker here and there. We've been handing out tracks. People have uh, come up to us today. We ran into a a couple couple Christians, and one of the Christians says, "Yes, what you guys are doing is extremely dangerous. Be careful." 
I said, uh, yeah, we know. <laughs> I was like, that was funny. We laughed. I was like, yeah, we've experienced a little bit of that already. So, praise God. Anyway, great time out here. Here. And, uh, you know. Running up against some battles, and you know, we get uh, the enemy out, and we've run into a lot of battles the last several days. But we're still out here, just uh, trying to do the work of God, show the gospel with the lost. Amen. I'm out here in Galatia right now, ancient area of Galatia. We're heading out to Skisadir. Facing some persecutions along the way, but just stopped along the side of the road to get some beautiful shots here of the great Galatian countryside. Praise God. Praise God. We are folding up these forbidden pieces of literature right here in Turkey. Uh, we are going to be handing these out. We have been stopped by the cops multiple times already. We are going to do a silent operation to get these out in, in Eskisa here. Yep. Um, we are going to just very carefully try to get these things out uh, without getting stopped by the police. We are trying to avoid that at all costs. Um, folks, I don't think you guys realize just how controlling uh, Islam is. Uh, the intimidation factor behind it, the fear. I know you guys have heard about it on tick television. You, know, you guys watch you know, about Islam and how bad it is. But when you experience it firsthand like we did on this trip, you're going to understand they don't want anything to compete with their religion. They don't want anything that could, uh, you know, shake a person's foundation in Islam. And they don't really have a foundation to really stand on. So this man who tried to stop us in Urgil when we were passing this out was literally shaking under the power of the Holy Spirit because... He was being challenged probably for the first time in a long time. Probably in his life. In his life, maybe, about his faith. Somebody was challenging him about the person and work of Jesus Christ and who he really was. And the man was literally shaking. Like he had Parkinson's disease or something. <laughs> he was just shaking. And that's happened at multiple times. We ran into an iman in Sil Silky, remember? Safilke. Safilke. And we, we gave, okay. and he, we were talking to him and he was shaking again. Yeah, he this is a common thing. The people are so shook by the power of the gospel. It's amazing. It's unbelievable how powerful the gospel is. It's the power of God to salvation. So thank you guys for the donation and the support. This is a very covert operation in a very Muslim country to get these tracks out. So... God bless you guys. So we are out here in one of the crowded districts of Ankara, and uh, I started reading the Gospel of John. I got to the part where uh, Jesus was turning the water into wine, and a bunch of cops just swarmed in and said, you gotta put that Bible away. <laughs> gotta put that Bible away. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, so I had to put the Bible away. Then I started quoting uh, passages from the book of John, and I said, you can't do that either. <laughs> So I went to another part of town, uh, you know, just across the street. I opened it up, started reading through John. I made it to about the part where uh, the man was healed at the pool of Bethesda. And another group of cops swarmed in. <laughs> Said, you got to put that Bible away. You, gotta, you cannot read that here. You know, and so I'm thinking, folks, you, you don't understand how privileged you are to know the Word of God and to know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You don't realize the privileges that you have. You don't realize how precious this word is. This is a real threat to the devil. The Bible is a real threat to the devil. Um, it really breaks apart the kingdom. You know, the prophet Jeremiah said that your word is like a hammer that breaketh the rocks into pieces. That's what the word does. And it was already having an effect on people out here. People were coming up and talking to us in English. People were having one-on-one -on -one discussions about Christ. And then it just gets shut down. So we're going to be probably relocating somewhere else, another side town over here where we can read the Bible publicly. 
without getting shut down. They already shut down our literature, confiscated a lot of our tracks, um, told us that we couldn't use banners or signs or anything like that. Just basically, it, folks, it's just shutting down Jesus. But I guarantee you the light's going to get out in this place. The light will get out. They're not going to be able to stop the gospel. I promise you that. But keep us in prayer because we are really fighting a battle out here just to tell people about Jesus. Amen? Here we are in the police station again. Uh, detained Turkey. Uh, we're, just, we're just going through it on this trip, guys. Uh, just a lot of opposition. A lot of people that don't want to hear the gospel. A lot of, you know, police shutting us down. Um, we're just determined, though. We're going to get this gospel to as many souls as we can on this trip so that they can hear for themselves and repent. Um, we're just not worried about what flesh can do unto us. We're not worried about man. A lot of people, they, they're too afraid to go out into places they don't understand to preach the gospel. We need to preach the gospel in these, in these Muslim you know, nations and all the world. You know, so I just want to encourage people, look, if you come to Turkey, you're going to face a ton of persecution, but it's going to be worth it. Because people that have never heard the gospel in all their lives are going to hear it. And they never will if you don't preach to them. And how are they going to hear without a preacher? Let me ask you that. huh? How are they going to hear without a preacher? Praise God. Benimle konuştuğunu ve kendisinin dünyanın Rabbi ve kurtarıcısı olduğunu ilan ettiğini duydum. Yaptığım tüm right kötü now. günahlardan dönmeye ve tamamen İsa Mesih'e teslim olmaya karar verdim. İsa'yı takip etmek şimdiye kadar verdiğim en iyi karardı. Günahlarımın ağırlığının omuzlarımdan kalktığını hissettim. Sonunda Tanrı'yı gerçekten kişisel ve gerçek bir şekilde tanıdığımı hissettim. Benim adım Mektü, ben Amerika Birleşik Devletleri'nden bir Hristiyanım. Hepimizin sonsuza kadar cehennemde yanmayı hak ettiğimizi sizinle paylaşmak için buradayım. Tek kurtarıcı vardır ve tek Tanrı vardır, onun adı İsa Mesih'tir. Günahkarları kurtarmak için dünyaya geldi. Tanrı'ya karşı no, işlediğiniz alone, günahlarınız alone. için çarmıhta öldü. Birçok kişi İsa'nın asla stop. ölmediğini stop. ancak stop. İsa'nın stop. kendi stop. ölümünü stop. birkaç stop. kez önceden stop. bildirdiğini stop. söylüyor. İsa bizim stop. işlediğimiz stop. günahları stop. kendi stop. üzerine stop. aldı ve onların bedelini stop. ödedi. Böylece stop. Tanrı ile barışabilelim. Seni çok seviyor ve seninle gezmek istiyor. İsa Mesih'in kanı tüm günahların ruhunu temizler. Kurtulmanız için tövbe etmeniz ve İsa Mesih'in müjdesine inanmanız gerekir. Hayatınızı İsa Mesih'e vermek için beklemeyin, sonsuzluğu onunla cennette geçirmenizi istiyor. İsa sizi çok seviyor ve önemsiyor ve ruhunuzu cehennemden kurtarmak istiyor. Bunu sana söylediğim için kimsenin bana kızmasını istemiyorum ama İsa'nın benim için yaptıklarını kimseden saklayamam. Başkalarına Tanrı'nın inanılmaz sevgisini anlatmak için dünyanın çeşitli yerlerine gittim. Tanrı dünyayı o kadar sevdi ki biricik oğlunu verdi 